Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters, the great teachers of all different traditions and times, in the end they've taught some very basic truths, which is that life is your teacher. Life challenges you to find the best of yourself. It's not about complaining about life. It's not about deciding if it's fair or not fair, or just or unjust. It's about taking an attitude that I am a guest here. The planet's been here for 4.5 billion years. I just dropped down for a wink. I didn't create it. I will not be the one who destroys it. People have tried, they didn't even come close. I'm just here visiting, and I'm going to have experiences. And that's what real teaching is about. I'm going to have experiences. Why? Because there are things happening. And I'm conscious. And I'm going to find myself every second of my life where a moment is unfolding in front of me. It's one of the deepest things I always try to teach you. There is a moment unfolding in front of you. That's reality. You're conscious. Therefore, you're aware of that moment. What's so complicated about that? The important thing to understand is the moment unfolding in front of you is no different in reality than the hundreds of billions of zillions of moments that aren't unfolding in front of you. On Mars, there's 800 billion going on at every single inch. Through time and space, there are moments unfolding everywhere. You don't get to see those. You're only going to experience the moment that's unfolding in front of you. That's the reality. And there are 700 billion zillion moments that you're not experiencing. So your ability to experience reality is zero because you can only experience the point oh 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 one percent of reality that's unfolding in front of you. Now, what happens, and this is very important to understand, if you want to solve any problems on this earth, either your personal problems or your family problems or your society problems or cultural or national, I don't care. It all comes from the same place. Every single thing comes from the same place. When you experience the moment in front of you, it's the one that comes into you. It's the one that has an impression on you. So if you meet a woman named Sarah and she's mean to you, I'm telling you the next time you meet a Sarah, not even the same one, you feel a little weird. If a car beeps at you when you weren't doing anything wrong, they just aggressively beep on you and go around you, and it's a certain kind of color, kind of a Mustang or something like that, I don't care if you're in a foreign city or a foreign country. When you see a car that looks like that, your heart goes like this. So what is happening is the moment in front of you is the one that's coming in and leaving an impression on you. And that impression gets stored inside of you. Why? Why doesn't it just come in and go through? The truth is that 99% of every single thing that ever went into you went right through. The white lines on the road, the people walking down the street, the trees you drove by, it all comes in, it goes through, it passes through. But some of it doesn't. A very small amount, like 0.001 of if you ever experienced, is still in there. So you start studying this. That's what yoga does. The, the teachings, they study, why am I the way I am? What is going on in here? It's not hard to understand. The moment you experienced comes in, and there are things you don't like. There are vibrations that are uncomfortable to you. You feel fear. You feel desire. You feel different things because of the moment. A rattlesnake is scary. A butterfly is beautiful. You're not doing that. Buddha says everything has its Buddha nature. That's not something you judged and decided. If you've ever seen a coiled up rattlesnake, that's scary. And it's meant to be scary, right? Don't say, oh, nice little rattlesnake. No, he's trying to be scary, trying to keep you away. And a butterfly is beautiful and soft. And if it lands on you, it's really special. They carry their own vibration. So when you experience, let's talk about the, you experiencing the moment in front of you, because that's always what's happening. That moment has sight, visual, sound, taste, smell, who knows? It also has a vibration. It has a vibration. A rattlesnake has a vibration. When it comes into it, it feels different than a butterfly feels. Notice that. That's not looks, sounds. It feels different. What happens is you can't handle, and you can't. This is the first humility you have to understand. You can't handle those vibrations. You can handle a tree driving by as long as it doesn't look like the tree that fell on your car when you were 16. If it looks like that kind of tree, I can't handle it. How about you? But if it's just a tree that didn't do anything to you before, you can handle it. It just goes right through. 
But if you can't handle it, meaning what? This is so important, meaning you in there can't handle the vibration. It happens to be a very deep thing, this thing, who you are, and the fact that you can't handle the vibration. When you can't handle something, you resist it. You push it away. Outside, you push it away. Somebody takes a swing at you, you put your arms up. It's instinctive, correct? When it comes in and the vibration is not comfortable to you, you don't want to feel it. You don't want it coming all the way in and touching you to the depth of your being. You might say, oh, I saw the sunset. It was so beautiful. I felt it was like a spiritual experience. It touched the core of my being. You might say something like that, but you don't say, God, this person was yelling at me. It was so caustic and so scary. It touched the core of my being. No, you don't say that. You say, I did everything I could do to have it not touch the core of my being. That's called resistance. You resist it inside. It already happened. You can't make it not happen. It happened outside. The reality of the moment was there, came in, started passing into your consciousness, and you didn't want it to. And so you did this thing called resist. You resist it. Freud talked about that if you resist it enough, if you don't want to experience enough, you repress it or suppress it. That's just an extreme case of resistance. You resist all the time. If somebody's talking to you and you don't want to stand there, you resist it. If there's a smell, you resist it. If the light is too bright, you resist it. If the food's not the right temperature or amount, you resist it. You walk into a restaurant. If they're playing music you don't like, you resist it. If people next to you are talking too loud, you resist it. We are serious with this resistance stuff, aren't we? So if you can't handle it, you know what handle it means? I don't have to do anything about it. All the trees drive by, the white lines drive by, the dotted lines go by, all the cars drive by. I don't have to do anything. It's okay. It's nice of you to say it's okay that reality can pass through you. There's a lot of reality. Saturn has rings. Is that okay with you? So is it okay with your car drove by? Depends. It depends on whether I had a past experience that I resisted. God, this is so important. I resisted it in the past. Now it's stuck inside of me. So this is the essence of yoga. It's understanding what is going on inside yourself. Why? So you can do something about it. If you don't understand something, if you don't understand what you're eating that's making you sick, you can't fix your diet. But if you understand and you pay attention, you have a chance of doing something about it. It's the same thing inside. So this stuff comes in, you can't handle it, and so you resist it. When you resist it, it stays in. That's it. It stays in. Why? Because you didn't let it go by. You did not let it pass through you. It's like a dam. You dammed it up. If you build the Hoover Dam, the Colorado River can't go anywhere So you're now responsible for holding all that pressure. I'm telling you, you are responsible now for the rest of your life. Go ask psychology. Will it be in there? It happened to you at five, some traumatic experience. Will it be in there when you're 55? Yeah, unless you did some serious work on yourself, that sucker's staying in there. The same as if you keep the Hoover Dam, that Colorado River not going where it used to go. It will try to. That river is still trying to flow downstream. They have to spend millions of dollars a year to make sure it doesn't. It's the same thing inside yourself. If you use your will, which is a, that's the power of self, is you in there, hire you in there, you have will. You don't have to just sit there. You can do things inside and out. You can make your arm move, that's will. You can pick something up, that's will. You can resist a thought or resist an emotion, that's will. So you have dammed up this energy that really happened. It's called reality. It came in, but it wouldn't pass through because you dammed it up. That stays inside of you. In yoga, thousands of years B.C., in the Upanishads, they talked about that. They called it a samskara. And that means an impression that got stuck inside your mind and your heart, inside your emotions. It has an emotional aspect, doesn't it? You don't just think, oh, I don't want that to happen. Anger comes up and all kinds of stuff. That is the energy of your being. You have tremendous energy. It's the energy that martial arts work with, Tai Chi and this and that. It's the Chi that acupuncture systems work with. It's spirit in the Bible. They talk about the rising of spirit. There's energy inside. You feel it when you get excited. You feel it when something's going the way you want. You get all turned on and, oh, full of energy. And sometimes you have no energy. You get depressed. That energy is part of your being. It's supposed to be flowing, but it can't flow because you shove this stuff on top of it. People want to say, what's the core of all the problems in society? That's it. When I'm done, you'll see that. Every single thing that every single person does and ever did is because of that. And it causes all the trouble. That's why families have trouble and societies have trouble and nations have trouble. And Wow, it's weird. Why? Because you store this inside of you. And every one of you stores something different. That's a very important thing to understand. There's no two of you that's not even close 
that are even close to the same. Never was and never will be. Why? Because you are experiencing different moments every moment than everybody else. Like maybe you're sitting here in this room saying we're all experiencing the same thing. No, you're not. You're sitting at a different angle. You're sitting at a different angle. You had an experience before you came here that's making you drift and think or something I said hit you just right. This other person didn't even listen to it. You're all having different experiences, even in this room. And then you're going to walk out and have totally different experiences. If you're identical twins, you'll all have totally different experiences. Since the experience, the moment in front of you every moment is different, it's going to come in and you're going to experience it differently. And then you will have seen the snake and she saw a butterfly. You're identical twin. You'll be totally different from then on. You're afraid of ropes. You're afraid of baby rattles. This person couldn't care less about it. But she's really desirous whenever she sees a butterfly, come on, land on my arm, land on my arm. You don't even understand what she's doing. You have these impressions and they're unique to you. And so what happens is your energy is trying to flow. That's yoga. That's the essence of yoga. Your energy is trying to flow, but it can't because you blocked it with all this stuff you stored inside. And that is exactly what Freud and psychology teach you. They just go to the extreme of only talking about traumatic experiences and true suppression and denial. We you know, don't even know that never happened to me. You can get pretty weird. If you push this stuff away enough to where you're not willing to let it come back up, you're doing this. A very important thing to understand. Nothing is inside of you but you. If you built this stuff in there, you did that. It was your will that resisted. And you want to know what? When it comes back up, and it will always come back up. It comes back up in your dreams, comes back up because somebody said something, comes back up because somebody didn't say something. Always it gets stimulated, and then it causes these reactions inside. What do you do? You push it back down. You either express it and throw junk out because you couldn't handle the energy, and you push it back down. You know we never talk about that sort of thing around your father. I told you that. Whoa, that's weird. Why wouldn't you be able to talk about something? Because daddy's got some stuff in there. And when you mention it, it comes flying up. And you'll be sorry you mentioned it. That's what's going on. It explains all of it. That's why you like what you like, what you don't like what you like. You're scared of what you're scared of. Other people aren't scared of it. Because you have these impressions that you stored from your past. And what will happen if you don't pay attention is the following thing's going to happen. You do admit you got all the stuff stored in there. Okay? Had a few things happen to you you didn't like? It doesn't have to be big. Your sixth birthday, you had it outside and it rained. You never liked the rain. I'm just not comfortable with the rain. Or it's windy and it blew something over and you got embarrassed when you were in high school. You had an exhibit and yours blew over. And I'm telling you, every time you feel that wind, you're going to feel yicky. All right, so you get down to the point where you understand I am messed up. Why? Because I have this stuff stored in here and I can't handle reality. When the moment unfolds in front of me, it hits my stuff. So I'm not experiencing what's actually happening. I'm experiencing what's stored inside of me. Now the question becomes, what do you do about it? Because it's in there, isn't it? You got to deal with it every day. Something makes you embarrassed. Something makes you self-conscious. Something makes you guilty. Right? Wow, it's unbelievable. How do you do it? What normally will happen, what we call the default. Like computers, we have a default. The default behavior, if you don't do anything about it, is as follows. I'm in here. I want to feel good. Everybody wants to feel good. I want to feel good. So what you're going to do is your blockages, your blockages, the stuff you stored inside, are going to determine your behavior patterns. If something starts to happen that's not comfortable to you, you're going to attempt to manipulate it so it doesn't happen. You're going to manipulate the world around you so that it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable inside. And you're going to manipulate the world around you so that it will tend to be the way that makes you feel good inside. You're going to want to have something unfold outside so that what comes up inside of you is exciting, is encouraging, is promising. And you're taught that that's how you should live your life. That's one thing you can do. Let this stuff you stored inside of you because you're unable to handle reality. Just to make sure you understand when I say not able to handle reality. Let's say you looked up in the sky with a telescope for the first time and you look at some of the planets and you saw that Saturn has rings. And for some ungodly reason, who the heck knows, your mind said, that's not fair. What? Look how beautiful Saturn is. It has these rings. It looks like a jewel. It really does. It looks like a jewel floating in the sky. Well, why doesn't Mars get to have rings? Why doesn't Venus get to have rings? No, this is not right. I don't like that Saturn has rings. Go on, knock yourself out. Have fun. Start marching up and down with a little sign in the middle of the street. Saturn should not have rings. Protest. What are you doing? You're not able to handle reality. And because you're not able to handle reality, you have to adjust your entire life to make it 
so that your stuff doesn't get hit or so that that which you like takes place. You end up living your whole life, and you're taught to. You're taught to live your life to get what you want and avoid what you don't want. That's what you're taught. Your whole society teaches that. Decide what you want and make it be that way. Get it that way. Make it happen. Go on. Go out there. Do it. So you realize what you're doing is you're caught. Your soul, your being, your essence, your beauty is blocked behind this stuff that you stored. And so now when the world comes in, you don't get to experience life. You experience your reaction to life. And you act based on that. If it reacted in a positive way, you try to make it stay. You try to make it happen. If it reacted in a negative way, you resist it. I don't want to go out again. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to see you. I'm going to walk around the block to avoid seeing. You have an argument with some friend of yours. They have a little spat. And it bothers you. And it keeps bothering you. Now, three days later, you see that person walking down the plaza. You walk the other way so you don't have to see them. Have you ever done it? It's running your life. So you wake up. What's the purpose of talking about this? So you understand what's going on inside of you. There's a teaching that says if you understand you, you understand everybody. Now you understand this stuff's in there, and it's affecting your behavior, your personality, every single thing. Your whole personality is just what you develop to live with yourself. I don't want to do too good because then I have to live up to it. People expect too much of me, so I just want to be average. There are people who do that with their personality. There are other people who sit there and say, I have to be the best. I have to be the best. I need people to accept me. I got to prove that I'm the best and smart at everybody. Other people sit there and say, I'm not even going to try at all. I don't even want an average. I don't want nothing. I want nothing to do with it. You're just protecting yourself from yourself. You can't handle what it feels like to be inside of you. So you're trying to dress a certain way, behave a certain way, drive a certain car so that you can express yourself and try to get things that make you feel better. If you get them, yes, I agree, you feel better. If you don't, you feel terrible. Why? It doesn't match what I wanted. And that comes out of the core of the problem people have with life. Instead of collecting coins and stamps or spoons, I collected bad experiences. How about you? I made a collection of bad experiences. Here's every single thing that ever bothered me. I stored it. I kept it. And it keeps coming back up. And I let it run my life. All right? Very good. Now what do you do? What you will do by default is you will attempt to say every moment that unfolds in front of me should match what I want. Every moment that unfolds in front of me should be the way I decided I needed to be based upon all the stuff that ever happened to me before. What's the probability of that happening? How about zero? And then you wonder why you're uptight. You wonder why you have anxiety. You wonder why you worry. So you made this model inside your head, and I'm telling you, you didn't make it. It's based on the past experiences that you stored. B.F. Skinner, the social psychologist, said, man is the sum of his learned experiences. Man is the sum of his learned experiences. Your mind is the sum of your learned experiences. You're not. You're the one who's in there noticing this. You're the consciousness, the self, the Atman, the soul, call it whatever you want. You know, you're very deep. But you do notice, everyone who's shaking your head yes when I say, does your mind do this? You have built a, a psyche, a mind, thought patterns based upon stuff you resisted or clung to in the past. So now you have all this stuff inside. Then you build another layer of mind which says, based on my stuff, this is how the world needs to be for me to be okay. So the default is, and you have, I want you to watch this. You're going to go out there, and you're going to try and make the moment unfolding in front of you be the way you want. And you're going to fail. That moment is the sum of everything that made it be the way it is. Every single thing had to be exactly the way it was for the moment in front of you be the way it is. And you're going to sit there and say, no, no, not on my watch. You're going to be the way I made up based on my past experiences. What is the probability that you win? How about zero? Most people wake up in the morning, they're at war. Do you understand that? I can't handle what happened yesterday. I can't handle the way this person is. I can't handle this. I can't handle that. So I have to fight and struggle. And oh my God, it creates so much anxiety and tension and anger. That is the cause of every single problem. What is? There are 7.5 billion of you on this planet right now doing exactly that. And no two of you agree. Because you didn't have the same experiences. And your stuff is based on your experiences. So you're unique. I go, I don't be unique. You're very unique. But then you made up this model that because I'm not okay, this is how everything needs to be for me to be okay. And now you go out and fight with everybody and everything. It's a competition. Who can get the moment to be most the way they want it to be? It causes wars, causes divorces, causes every single problem there is. I don't care what age you are. I don't care what nationality you are or, or anything. It's always the same thing. 
what spirituality says, and it's very rare that people truly work with spirituality, is you really want to live like that? Because guess what? You don't stand a chance. If you're waiting for your ship to come in, you lose because there is no ship. The world is unfolding in accordance to chemistry, physics, psychology, sociology. It's unfolding in accordance to the billions and trillions of forces that are making it be the way it is right now. And you better start by understanding I'm either part of the solution or I'm part of the problem. If what I'm doing is what everybody else is doing is saying, but this is the way I see it. Well, believe me, people see it different. And you know what? Neither of you are right. You see it the way you see it because of the experiences you had and what you did with them. And so you develop these concepts inside your head. They did the same thing. It sure looks right to you because that way is the way that makes you feel right. That's why you made it up that way. The solution, and it's very rare that a person can do it, but at least you try. A solution is a person transcends their personal self. They're in there and they realize, yes, I have a way that I think about it. Yes, I have a way I want it to be. Yes, there is a way that makes me happier and there is a way that makes me sadder. And that is my sickness. Because reality is reality. And if I was really a high being, I would be honored to be experiencing what took 13.8 billion years to create. And here it is standing in front of me. And instead of fighting it and arguing with it and resenting it and all that, I'm honoring it. I'm appreciating it. I'm worshiping, my God, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang. And this is what showed up. This person's in front of me yelling at me. And it took 13.8 billion years for him to get there. You should be blown away. That is a person who has transcended their personal self. Now, you understand the personal self? It's very personal, the things that happen to you and the particular way you look at things. The experiences you had left this way of thinking. The other person feels just as strongly about theirs as you feel about yours. So the starting solution is that you realize you're not going to change everybody because they're very caught in being what they are. The starting position is understanding if something's going to change, it's going to be me. Why? It's the only thing you have control over right now. You're in here. I hope you see the patterns I'm talking about. And you realize the quality of your life is not getting it the way you want. If you get it the way you want, it's not going to stay that way. You won't stay that way, and it won't stay that way. Ever change your mind? Ever get what you thought would make you happy and it didn't? Ever get something happens you thought would destroy you and turn out to be the best thing ever happened to you? It keeps changing because every time you have a new experience, it changes. Ever decided you really wanted something and go to a movie and see that somebody else got something similar to that and it made them miserable and you get out of the movie and say, ah, I don't want that anymore. A movie or a book. It doesn't take much. All it takes is another experience to come in and it changes because you're the sum of the learned experiences. That's what Christ meant when he said, don't build your house on sand. That is so shallow. It's got no solidity to it. It changes with the wind. So what's the alternative? The alternative is to say, I don't want to be like that. Do I have that going on inside of me? Yes. Is it true that if somebody says something that doesn't fit what I like, I get upset. It gets upset inside. Yes. Guess what? You are independent of what your mind is saying. You are independent of what your heart is feeling. You are the consciousness that notices that something got hit. You can notice it. And now I feel angry. Something came in right. Now I feel attracted. You can be aware of that. And guess what? You don't have to do it. And that's what it boils down to. You have will. I said that to start with. You have the ability to not go with the garbage that is coming up inside of you. If somebody is talking to you and you don't like what they're saying and you start seeing that your mind is getting very negative and your heart is starting to get upset, you have the ability to stay there and use the experience to learn how not to get involved in your garbage. You are superior to these reactions that are happening inside of you. I don't care who you are, what you've ever done. The consciousness is supreme. It's powerful. And if you want to, but you have to want to, If you want to, you can do what we call liberate yourself. Free yourself from yourself. That's what liberation is. It is freeing yourself from the stuff that you built up inside yourself so that you can look into the world and actually see what's happening instead of see your reaction to what's happening. Right now, it's coming in, and if you don't like it, you fight it. You're not reacting with what's there. You're reacting to your reaction inside. You can't devote your life to the reaction or compensation to the stuff that you stored. So you wake up and you realize the world is not going to match 
this garbage I stored inside myself. And so I'll leave that to suppress it or manipulate or be sly about it or something like that, right? Instead of being real, instead of being able to be free. It would be free. You're supposed to be having fun here. It can't be fun to go to war with life all the time. And make sure everybody likes you and you don't say anything wrong. And You're supposed to be free to express yourself and experience and grow and just embrace the whole thing, all right? You can't while you're trying to compensate for the garbage inside of you. So you make a commitment to yourself. I am not going to use the moments that unfold in front of me from now on to get what I want from them or avoid what I don't want. Because that's a stupid game with life. Life's very big. (laughs) I'm taking it personal. I'm going to use them to help me get rid of the stuff I stored inside of me. So now if you're not behaving in the way that this thing inside of me feels comfortable, right? I have two choices. Make you or, ready, I'm going to say it, let go of the stuff inside of me that's making me uncomfortable. Use life to free yourself instead of using life to fight and bind yourself. That's the great difference between a worldly life and a spiritual life. It used to be, I want to make it be the way I want and not be the way I don't want. Now, I want to learn to handle whatever it is. I want to learn to handle it. If I'm driving down the street and somebody's driving in front of me 20 miles an hour below the speed limit, if you can pass, by all means pass. The lines are dotted and you're allowed to pass and there's not a car coming. But if you can't, you have a choice. Bother yourself about it. Just sit in there and talk to the other person. They don't hear you. What's wrong with you? Just bother yourself. Or sit there and say, okay, I'm on a planet, spin in the middle of nowheres, and there's somebody driving 20 miles an hour below the speed limit in front of me. All right? Can I handle it? From now on, a great being does not ask ever, do I like it? They ask, can I handle it? Hold another bar. Can I handle it? And the answer, by the way, I forgot to tell you, that's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes. I will learn to handle reality. And you just make it a game. It's a video game that you get to play inside yourself. I've been telling you recently, I don't give techniques. There's tens of techniques. But I've been giving you three very high categories of techniques. One, positive thinking. Any of them are fine compared to buying into the stuff coming up inside of you. You need to practice your scales. You do it in everyday life. What is positive thinking? Look, I love that I get in this opportunity to see if I can let go of the garbage inside me because of how they're driving. I'm not mad at them for the way they're driving. I like it because it gives me an opportunity to let go of this stuff. Or, you know, I have a grandmother too. I don't want somebody beeping behind her. Her last years of being able to drive, she's so sweet, and she can still drive. She works at it. You, you leave her alone. Oh, that's me. I'm the one who's about to be. <laughs> right? You can do things that are positive, constructive, to have fun with yourself. You play. Your mind does not have to be negative. It's being negative because it's stimulating the negativity you stored inside of you. You must admit your mind tends to be negative. It tends to complain. It tends to not like stuff. That's because you stored all this stuff that you didn't like. And so now everything reminds you of it. It's all stimulated back up. So long story short, you're a conscious being. That's what mindfulness means. You're a conscious being. You're present. You're noticing this disturbance come up inside of you. You take one quick look. Is this worth being disturbed about? And if the answer is I can't do anything about it, of course it's not. Why would you disturb yourself with something you can't do anything about? Oh, my God, the sun's so bright. Oh, my God, there's a cloud. Okay, you know, either, either you're ruining your life because there's a cloud or you're enjoying the fact that there's a cloud. Which one do you think is more fun? Just play. Make, make the mind say something positive. You can make your mind say anything you want. Don't let it be negative. Don't suppress the negativity. No, don't, never do that. It'll just get worse. Just create another conversation. Oh my God, it's raining. Why does it have to be raining? I love the rain. Imagine if there was no rain. Imagine if there was no rain. The flowers wouldn't grow. Anything you do neutralizes the negativity. You're not buying into it. You're not devoting yourself to it. You were able to step in consciously, mindfully, and create another story, another scenario, right? There is a higher technique. A higher technique, you'll use all of them, is it goes under the general terminology of mantra. But it doesn't have to be an Eastern Hindu mantra or something, all right? It means my mind is capable of learning. Train it to say something over and over again. In yoga, we use mantras. You know, Om Nasi Bhaya Guru, Om Sri Ram. I don't care. But you can sit in there saying, I love it. I love it. What? 
Doesn't matter. I love it. <laughs> How would you like to have going outside your mind? Cars driving slower than the speed limit. One part of your mind saying, the other part saying, I love it. I just love it. I love it. I love it. You're, you're welcome to do it. Create a layer of your mind. Your mind has many layers. You can multitask. Create a layer of your mind through repetition. It's habitual, the mind, right? You got a song stuck in there. It won't go out, right? I want this stuck in there. When you're driving the car, so do the mantra. When you're walking, every time a foot goes out, do the mantra. Just start to develop the habit. And next thing you know, you'll be driving down the road, mind your own business, and all of a sudden this person is driving weird, and your mind will start with the negativity. And But you'll hear behind, because you made a habit of it, I love it, I can handle this, I love it, I can handle this, or whatever it is. And you choose, do you want to put your consciousness on the noise, which is totally destructive with no positive outcome, or put your consciousness on this higher thing? And next thing you know, it's a refuge. You choose I would rather hang out with this mantra than I would hang out with the maniac. So you develop a layer of your mind that is a gift to yourself. It's a refuge. It's a place you can go to just fall back. And you'll see that 99% of the stuff you bothered yourself about, there's nothing to do about it. There's nothing to do about the fact that it's raining. It'll stop. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do about the fact that the driver's, you know, two blocks later, the driver turns off. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the experience. It was fun, right? Because you stayed calm and centered. You're going to see the vast majority of stuff there's nothing to do about. And if there is, just you understand, right? There are things you need to deal with, but I want you to deal with the thing, not deal with your reaction to the thing. If you get a call from the principal, you're a 16-year-old kid, as we found drugs in his locker, you come on down here right away. And you're all high class and fluffy and never thought your kid would ever do anything like that. And your first thoughts are, what would the neighbors think? And oh my, I don't want to see the principal. I'm embarrassed. So if you're going down there with that attitude, you're not going to do any good for anybody. If on the other hand, you start seeing your personal stuff come up, you do the mantra, relax your way through it, and you go down there with one intent. What can I do to help? What can I do to help? How can I help the school? How can I help the principal? How can I help my son? How can I help this situation? Not how can I help myself because I can't handle the situation, all right? That's spiritual activism. People ask me, what about activism? Shouldn't I be working for the environment? Shouldn't I be trying to help this? Yes, yes, there are all sorts of things that are going on out there. Now you understand why. (laughs) Because everybody's got different impressions and everybody behaves differently. Yogananda was an enlightened master. You know what he said of all this? But by God's grace, there goes myself. In other words, if those things had happened to me, I might be the same as that person is. That's what compassion is. It's not I agree with you or I sympathize with you because I had this. Compassion is, yep, I see where you're coming from. That's not where I'm coming from, but I understand how you see it. I don't agree, but I understand how you see it because I understand how I see it. You have compassion for how somebody else looks at the world. You have compassion for somebody else's behavior. And then you deal with it. By all means, deal with it. But don't deal with it out of anger and fear and anxiety and desire and like and dislike. Deal with it out of clarity. That's what true activism is. Right action. We were talking about right action is first let go of yourself. First let go of yourself. Learn to let go of yourself. Then see if there's still something out there that you need to deal with and do what you can to help it. Do what you can to raise it. Not do what you can to make it okay for you. Do what you can to help the situation. And that's how a great being lives their lives. I said there were three layers. One is positive thinking. And the lowest is just build your life around your garbage. Please don't. Two, you do positive thinking. Three, get a mantra going all the time so you stay conscious in it all the time. The highest is called relaxation. Relaxation? Yes. If something happens and hits something inside of you, it means it wants to come up. It means it wants to release. It's an opportunity to let it go. Relax. No. Yes. Just relax. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest. If you relax, you're not involved in it. You can't interact with something when you're relaxing. Relax and lean away from the noise, and you're going to leave the room for it to pass you. You will change so quickly. I'm telling you, a true spiritual being is not the same when they go to bed at night as they were when they woke up in the morning. You are not the same person because you let go of stuff all day. That's what you did. And when you go to sleep, you're freer than you were in the morning. And it's like that every day. You just continuously, and once you catch on, that this works. If If I don't fight with it and I just relax, you're giving it the right to pass. But it hurts. Of course it hurts. It's stored with pain. It's coming back with pain. It's scary. Of course it's scary. That's why you stored it. <laughs> you were afraid of it. But you were five. Now you're not five. Don't let things that happened to you 50 years ago still bother you. Let go. Just keep relaxing and releasing. 
and then we're going to stop. But what happens? That's the highest. Just relax and lean away and give it the room to pass. Offer it to God. Do whatever you want. Just let it pass. And you're going to find out at some point that because this stuff is going, some energy will awaken inside of you. Real energy. It's not some fake stuff. Love. You know what love feels like? What does enthusiasm feel like? Enthusiasm. You want to, Passion. It's energy, isn't it? That comes up inside of you from behind, and it keeps feeding you. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of the Father. That's how Christ put it. You don't just get high by what's happening outside. There's this flow of energy inside, and you start really liking it, and you realize it is directly proportionally related to how much you let go. The more you let go, and you don't involve yourself in this garbage inside of you, the more energy there is. And the more energy there is, the more you don't want to get involved with the stuff because the energy is so nice. And this is the upper descent. And you will get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And it can take you very, very high. That now you get into deep spirituality that it takes you into, into states that are beyond yourself. So that is what it means to grow based on right understanding. Now you understand why it's the way it is, don't you? Every person of every culture, everywhere, that's why it's the way it is. That's why it's a mess. You ain't changing it by complaining. You change it by changing yourself. People say, well, what about the purpose of life? What should I be doing with my life? The highest thing you can do with your life is make yourself so that every moment that passes in front of you is better off because it did. You lifted it. You smiled. You served. You did something to raise the energy as it passed by you. That's the highest life you can live. You become a servant of life instead of serving yourself. All right. Work on these things. Tiger.